The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. The natural man will not comprehend. So why are we trying to get them to live kingdom living, live Christian lives without becoming Christians? That's what religion does. We're trying to get them to conform to something that they're not. Conform without conversion. That's not how God set it up. God said, don't worry about conforming them and don't try to make, constrain them. Try to convert them. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine into their hearts. Give them that law, the law of the schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. Give them what God says about sin. And when they say, well, I like it, I say everybody likes sin. How many people do you think would do something they don't like to do? Now, after a while, it catches up with you, you don't like it anymore. But how many people do you think just keep on doing something they don't like to do? Just because they don't like it. Now, think about that. I use my credit card for things I've got money for. You know why? I don't like being in debt. If I, can't get, if I don't know where the money's coming from right away, and I don't know it's there right now to be able to pay that thing off, that I could not pay it off right this minute if I needed to, I don't spend it. You say, why? Because I don't like it. Some people like using a credit card. They don't care if they ever pay it off. You know what they do? They go out there and spend it. You try to tell them, hey, 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 that's not sensible to spend your money that you don't have. And they'll say, oh, I'll get the money later. I say, how? Well, you know, I, I, I'll come up with it. Well, if you have it, why don't you use the money? Why don't you pay the credit card off right that same day that you spend it? Why don't you pay it off within the next week? Why don't you do that? I said, well, I'll, it'll, it, we'll get it paid off. I said, please don't run for office. We've got enough of those idiots up there. I'm just trying to tell you. That's what happens. People like it. People like drinking alcohol. And so they're going to justify their drinking alcohol. But I say, why? They say, I like the taste of it. I said, I might too. I don't know if I do anymore or not. I liked the taste of it 30 years ago. I said, I just quit drinking it. He said, why don't you quit drinking it? Because it wasn't doing me any good. All it was doing was bringing me a chance of having a harm. Because you get one drink drunk before you get two drinks drunk. And people don't even know why. I said, just don't drink the first one. I said, I tell you what, you can have a second one if you want to. Just don't drink the first one. You'll never get drunk. They said, well, you got to drink the first one and get the second one. I said, why? Because it builds upon the first one. I said, what are you preaching on? I'm preaching on you can't explain that to somebody. That's why you have to speak to them in parables. You cannot just take a Bible truth and throw it out there to somebody because they'll never comprehend it. So Jesus spoke to them in parables, and then they're trying to figure out the parables. They're spending their life trying to figure out these parables. And yet they're making super common sense. Let me say this. Tell them what God, tell them what God wants to do. Now, let me just ask this. You ever tried to teach an unbeliever holy things? You ever tried to tell them how they ought to live? And find out it doesn't work? Or find out they're miserable doing it? Because they don't want to? You ever tried that? They use logic in thinking about this stuff. It's called the wisdom of the world or the wisdom of men. 
And the wisdom of men is foolishness compared to the wisdom of God. I mean, tell him God wants you to give before you get it. Tell him, God wants you to give before you get it. Give and it shall be given unto you. And you know what they'll say? Hmm. No, no, you say it first, then you give. Tell them that you, you're laying up all your treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves don't break through and steal. Tell them I'm laying up my treasures there. I'm depending on my king to take care of me. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Tell them you're doing that. And then you know what they'll, say, they'll tell you? They'll tell you, you're crazy. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You've got to put something aside for tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. Now I'm telling you what, it's hard to tell the brethren this. Because we've been so brain dirty by worldly philosophy that we think you've got to take care of yourself. Well, why do I have a king? My king can't take care of me. Then somebody says, you mean tell me you don't have a savings account? I didn't say that. I'm saying why do we do what we do without the king telling us to do it why do we have a logic that this is the way it's supposed to be done? When somebody says they don't have such and such, we start saying, oh, no, that doesn't make sense. You've got to do, you've got to do something for your future. Who said my future's in heaven? We sang, I've got a home prepared with a sanctified. But what if you don't die before you're 90? Then I live till I'm 90. They say, but you won't have anything. I guarantee you I'll have food to eat. Or God's alive. He feeds the fowl of the air. I guarantee you I'll have raiment to wear. Or God's alive. He says he clothes the lilies of the field. Are we not much better than they? Say what you might be living under a bridge. Not for raising kids right. Not the saints of God, but the brethren. No. But let me say that wouldn't be too bad. They lived in caves in the book of Hebrews. There were cave men in the book of Hebrews. They lived in caves. They were sawn asunder. They were, they, were, they were being hunted down and running from a world that's trying to destroy them. They'll mock you. If you live for God. And they'll turn around and rend you. If you try to make them do it. I just asked them when they start telling me. You need to have a savings account. Put your money away. I said how many people got destroyed when Enron collapsed? How many retirements were destroyed? How many people got destroyed from the savings and loan crisis? How many people got destroyed by the banking crisis? The reason they have a FDIC. Thing it's called. Is that not what it's called? Yes. The reason they have that is because people lost all their monies when banks collapsed. You lay it up in our, our, on earth. Moth and rust corrupt and thieves break through and steal. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. And those are the, those are the things where people were irresponsible with their finances. What about just sicknesses coming on? Regular everyday things happening and everything's gone. A natural disaster coming along and you lose everything. What about that? How many homes are broken into every day in America? They came into my house, stole my wife's um, purse, found out she didn't have nothing in it but a couple of dollars in a subway car. You know what? Subway card had five dollars on it, so we had five dollars on the subway card and two dollars in cash. That's what they ended up getting. They found out it wasn't worth breaking my house. Next time they came, they came and brought stuff. <laughs> no, they didn't. But I'm just saying. What I'm trying to tell you is, that's how much. What do we need? My house has been broken into. Somebody stole our brand new air conditioner and our brand new house. I'm talking seriously. Did they not? Mm -hmm. And I was happy. My wife came home and said, it's hot. I said, it's not that bad. We went and looked outside and the air conditioner.
conditioner is gone. I said, no wonder it's hot. There's no air conditioner. Brand new. I thought it was under warranty. <laughs> and broken. It wasn't. It was gone. Tell me how many children are still grandma's savings so they can go buy drugs. It happens every day. And people are saying, I'm going to put up my treasure down your arm. Now, like I said, I'm not saying don't have a savings account. If God tells you to have one, have one. Don't look to it as your dependency. Don't look to it as what's going to take care of you in old age. Everything can go away except for the king who's going to take care of us. No matter whether we have it or we don't have it. The idea is to be, to be so sensitive to him. And don't judge others for not, for not living this way. And don't try to get the dogs and swine to live this way. People have to deal with these things. That's the context of this. And yet we are so critical in our spirit. And then we start trying to tell others that's how you've got to live. And you know what they start thinking? If I live this way, I'm going to heaven. If I live this way, I'm going to heaven. And they've never allowed Christ to be their king. You cannot live a kingdom living without a king. The prince of this world and the powerful think their posterity will continue. The Bible says in Proverbs, or that, or, I mean, it, it says that their their in, in, their in, inward thought is. That their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. This is their way and this is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their saying, See law. Here's what it says. This is in, actually in the book of Psalms. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall be on them. That's what they think. They say, hey, we'll just keep on going forever. Our kids will have it. And all of a sudden, there's an inheritance tax. Not from saying this. See, the world we would call kingdom living is haphazardous when God calls it holiness. The difference between haphazardness and holiness is our fellowship with the king. That's why it teaches us the principles of kingdom living in chapter 5. It teaches us the prayer for kingdom living in chapter 6. Because you must understand the principle and must have a fellowship with the Lord through prayer before you can ever comprehend kingdom living. I'll give you these thoughts and I am done. Do we attempt to conform those who live under the power of darkness to live like they could live under the kingdom of God's dear son? Do we attempt that? Hmm. Is it, it let me say this, is it impossible to truly conform a vile person to living for Christ that it is to conform a dog or pig to live like a king. Try to get live like a person. Dog or pig will not live like a person. Try it. The dog returns to its farm. If you let it. It's in their nature. Just like if you get let go, you'll return to your own company. It's in your nature. If nobody could stop you from doing what you wanted to do today, this afternoon, nobody knew and nobody's going to find out, what would you do? And you weren't going to get in trouble for it. 
That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who I am. That's why I've got two natures that battle. I've got an old nature that wants certain things. And I've got a new nature that wants other things. And I say, dear God, dear God, guide me in the path of righteousness for thy name's sake. There's two natures. We can strain them to conform by laws or by coercion. Constrain them to come to church by offering candy. We constrain them to do things by either saying it's illegal if you don't or by saying we'll give you a blessing if you do. And they don't do it because they love the king. Why do you do what you do? Do you do it because you're scared of what happens if you don't? Or because you love the king? See, that's the question. He was dealing with these things. If you don't do what you do, if you don't live for God because you love Him, after you examine yourself and you find out the only reason you live for God is because you're scared not to. Because of coercion, by, or because of constraint, other than by the love of Christ constraining you. If something else, you need to examine yourself when you be the fighter. Are you saved? Is the reason you don't go to certain places, don't look at certain things, because you love God, or is it because you're scared to be caught? Is the reason you don't give more because you're scared you won't be able to take care of yourself? Or because God has not directed you? God directed you something else with your finances. Are you seeing? I'm not asking for money. I'm trying to tell you. Why do you do what you do? Man looks on the apple of the the Lord looking on the heart. Some of you are saying it doesn't even make sense. You were here today, so you got to cast it out of court months. Dogs and swine. Dogs and swine just have to show up at the church house. Because if you can't comprehend it, this thing is very simple. Let him be your king. Father, I pray you would help us to just allow Christ to be our king. He will take care of us. Lord, I pray you would help us to honor him. Oh God, we've been so bombarded with the world And they'll justify the philosophies because wisdom is justified in the church. But Lord, we certainly want to live by thy word. We don't want to live a balanced life. We want to live a believer's life. We thank you for what you do in Jesus' name.